Farmers like Peter Sweeney worked nonstop preparing for the expected landfall of Hurricane Florence. A week before it hit, the projected storm track would have taken it through the heart of Virginia. That meant it was time to harvest hay fields quickly and move cows to higher ground. We've got uh, four generators on standby. We've got a, a large tractor with a grapple. So a lot of it is really just cleaning up debris to get back to the, to the pastures and to the cows to check them. Hurricanes aren't the only threat farmers face. This past June, Burning Daylight Farms experienced two back-to-back -back floods in less than two weeks. Water rushing into the Ravana River caused it to rise more than 12 feet. Debris hung in trees and Sweeney was unable to reach his livestock. The only uh, way to get to some of our pasture is right beside the riverbank where the roads are. So we were cut off twice from getting to check the cows. Uncertainty in Hurricane Florence's track and forecast ranging from 8 inches to 18 inches of rain meant Virginia farmers were preparing for a worst case scenario across the Commonwealth. A lot of things getting batted down around the farms, whether it was augers that were being lowered, they were looking around for any roofs that might need tending to that they hadn't. Um, just trying to get squared up around the farmstead and then certainly last week the big push was a harvest to get as much corn in the bin or vegetables in the bin or sod cut that they could uh, ahead of the storm. That meant long days in the harvester ahead of the storm and longer days ahead if floodwaters damaged fields. The storm turned away from Virginia and devastated the Carolinas, but remnants returned days later, sparking heavy rain and tornadoes in central Virginia and heavy rain elsewhere in the state. Tornadoes that touched down near Richmond killed one man in Chesterfield County and flooding killed another man in Louisa County. Rain continued to cause roadways to be flooded and land access was cut off to some farmland. I think the biggest concern now is we have calving going on and I think maybe the oldest calves here are two to three weeks and so sometimes you know they'll separate from their mom and if the uh, power is down on the fences they'll go beyond the fence because the vegetation is taller and they'll stay there and sometimes it's next to impossible to find them. Early indications show that Virginia dodged a bullet from the storm's havoc, proving that early storm reporting and hard work by diligent farmers protected most from great loss. They've got that even keel approach and they took it as that. That's what I saw last week. We're gonna deal with what the good Lord gives us. We're gonna prepare however, however we can today, but we're gonna deal with whatever we get. And um, I think it's a lot of relief among our growers here in Virginia that uh, we didn't get the brunt of it and a lot of uh, compassion for the growers south of here that have suffered a lot of property damage and a lot of agricultural damage. As of the middle of September, farm losses from Hurricane Florence in Virginia were still being calculated. Farmers lost much more in North and South Carolina where the storm brought damaging winds and devastating flooding. Reporting in Albemarle County, I'm Sherry McKinney.